And I said, hey, yay, 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 hey, yay, yay. I said, hey, what's going on? Get in getting a suntan? Oh, yes, you is. Look at you. You're getting bigger. Yeah. Somebody likes their food. Anyway, guys, welcome to Sunday here on Vlogging Life. Today, we're going to do that power line over Ethernet shit. Which is going to be a challenge, mainly to get that fucking table to move. I may have to take everything off of it to move it, because the son of a bitch weighs about 300 pounds on its own. That table was an ex-banker's table, designed to fucking never move. And, um, it's a hour and a half to get going, but I gotta figure something out for that room. I looked it over last night after I was on the vlog and all that, and I'm not sure how I'm going to tackle this project. So, let's get another coffee into us, because I fucking need it. And then we'll pitter-patter. So I saw this really cool device on Facebook today. I've been up for a bit, guys. I've been up since noon. Yeah, I like to sleep in on the weekends. Fuck it. But that's because I stay up a little later than I should playing video games. Anyway, I saw this cool device on uh, Facebook. And it's for people who own the iPhone 6 or 7. Um, has to be the 6 or 7. Can't be the Plus because those are just way too big. And it's a case for your iPhone that literally turns it into an Android. So you have your iPhone screen on the front, your Android screen on the back. Pretty cool, right? Somehow the system interconnects and it allows you basically to use the Android operating system with the iPhone's cameras, the Android operating system with the iPhone's uh, uh, cellular network, as well as Wi-Fi connectivity. All the backpack does is houses an OS for Android and is driven by the iPhone. Now what I think is cool about this is while you're in Android mode, you're still in iPhone mode. So let's say you have like MSN Messenger, or fuck, Facebook Messenger, better, open on the, uh, we'll say the iPhone, but you wanted to watch YouTube on the Android, all you gotta do is flip your phone over, and now you have Android and iPhone. I wanna check something down there. Okay, I think we might be able to do this. Just looking at the outlets where I'm gonna be plugging this power line over AC into. Um, so yeah, gives you this great ability to run two screens with two different operating systems. Now my cousin was like, I don't understand why you'd want this. Because she's not a nerd, like me. And uh, like I'm a big time tech geek nerd. I love technology. I saw this and it was like, wow, you know, you can get both worlds. If you want to be Android, you flip the phone over. If you want your iOS, you flip the phone over. Because some apps are iOS only, some apps are Droid only. So when you can have both going on the same device, that's sweet. Some people will want both and they'll go out and buy like an iPhone and then an Android tablet or an Android phone and an iPad mini or an iPod touch. Just so they have access to both OS's so they're not limited to what they can do. This device gives you best of, best of, best of both worlds. And what's nice about having that is uh, just the complete versatility of having both options available. Also, dual screen on a phone? Fucking badass. I honestly could see cell phones in the future being produced with a screen on the front and on the back. Maybe even they'll make it into where uh, the phone itself will flip open and you have two screens side by each so you can hold it like a book. Who knows? Like, if they can find a market for such a thing, someone will create it and it'll either be hot or not. Like... Right now, cell phones have, like, Samsung has the ability to split the screen in half, so you can have a YouTube video playing on the top and your text messages on the bottom or whatever. But imagine having two screens where you can be doing it, because a lot of people nowadays, like, I know uh, a few of my friends are actually filming from their S7s, editing on their S7s using PowerDirector, and then uploading to YouTube on their phone. Doing everything from the handset rather than doing it from a computer. And if you had two screens, life would be so much easier. And obviously, you'll never see this here flip-flopped where you can buy a device that clips onto the, an Android phone and gives you the option to go into iOS. Mainly because Apple does not free license their uh, operating system. That shit's proprietary to them and they refuse to release it. You know, the same reason why Hackintoshes are illegal as frig. Nobody really enforces it. If a cop came into your house for an inspection for any reason and saw you're running a Dell Inspiron, with Mac OS, they're not about to bust out the cuffs and tase you, bro. They're just not going to give a shit. But it is theoretically illegal. And, you know, I just, you never hear in the news of, you know, fucking 18 year old Hackintosh owner goes to prison for using a operating system on a computer that it didn't come with. That's just something that doesn't really happen very often because it's like a non malicious crime, if you will. Like, nobody's getting hurt. There's no risk of anybody in danger. 
you're just putting an operating system on a computer that wasn't meant to run it. So it's one of those, it's illegal, but we're just going to fucking not care because why do the paperwork? But still, I think the whole concept is cool to have an, an, an Apple phone with an Android backplate that you can basically switch your flavor without having to go out and buy a new handset because I got a couple friends on online uh, like my one buddy, he posts like monthly, like I got an iPhone 6 looking to switch it out for an Android. Let me know what you got. And then like two months later, he's like, Hey, I got this Android phone and I'm looking to get an iPhone cause he wants to go back to the old flavor. Well, with this device, you just buy an iPhone and then you clip it on and it, it's a case that will reinforce your phone to protect it. And it gives you the functionality of both OSs. So when you're tired of Android, you just flip it over and go to iPhone. When you're tired of iPhone, flip it over, go to Android. Both can take calls, both can make calls, and both can pretty much operate the same way. Except for, you know, iPhones are great for noobs, and Android's great for people who like to customize the shit out of their shit. All in all, it's a brilliant idea, and uh, I think for people who like to use their phones for creating, or well, especially Apple, who like to use their phones for creating media, because, let's face it, Android has nothing on the market compared to iMovie for Apple iMovie for Apple, uh, for iOS, is amazing compared to anything we have on Droid. So, I know a couple people who use their, I think Rex was actually one, he would use his iPhone to film, and then he would edit it in iMovie on the phone, and then fire that up to YouTubes, and it works great. Like, the iOS iMovie is pretty damn nice. It's probably one of the only iO, or one of the only mobile platform video editing software is that I know that you can actually do a jump cut mid vid sequence that you don't need to import the same clip a couple times and then do crop and trims so that's pretty cool and I wish Android had something like that but they haven't gotten really that far with their video editing suites with them it's like you do all the editing in your cuts and then you bring it in and trim the fat so I don't know it's okay I guess personally I like editing all my shit on a computer but uh I would really like the uh, the ability to have two screens. That'd be my thing, and the ability to swap back and forth between iOS and Android. Now, obviously, the file systems for the Android, from what I read, uh, it's driven by an SD card that you put into the Android side of things, and that's its memory management. Plus, it has eight gigs on board to store the OS and a little bit of shit. But the camera system, I don't know, like, it's, it's really weird the way it works. So maybe the 8 gigs on board is just to run the Android shit, and then it uses the storage on the phone for your for your camera shit. They didn't really go into depth, they, they just show that it's being produced, and I personally think it's a brilliant fucking idea. Let me know in the comments below if you could actually use such a device if you're an iPhone user and you wanted to give Android a try. You know, if they release this thing for like two, 250 bucks, and it gets you a powerful Android handset on the back of your iPhone, fuck, what's, what's not to love? Alrighty, well, I'm going to do the easy part. I just deactivated both my computers over here and put the video on pause. Uh, what we're going to do, and this is weird, this outlet was installed where the ground is facing up, and as you can see, there's not much room. So, I'm going to have to play move the extension cords around to see if I can get shit did and go from there. So let's pit a batter. Alrighty, we got one installed, but uh, so far no lights on the, uh, I don't know which one's which. I think this is the network and the one in the middle is the power line, probably because the other one's not hooked up yet. So let's pit a batter. Alrighty, here's my technicality here. Okay, I need to get to that outlet. This room only has the one outlet. So, I don't need both these power bars plugged in. I only need the one. I'm going to delete one. Well, first I got to get everything off this table. Delete one of the power bars and go from there. So the white one back there that's glowing behind the Tupperware container, it's the one I'm going to pull. I'm going to plug everything into this black one. This black one's going to get plugged into the power line over AC. And that's my battle plan there. So first thing I need to do is clear everything off this table to make it lighter to lift to get it out of the fucking way. I'm going to bring it forward about, I don't know, maybe eight inches. That should expose the plug enough where I can plug in the power line over AC. And my fan just fell off the TV. 
lovely. Alrighty, I got a mess of cables down here that I gotta work through, but as you can see, we got two green lights here. I haven't hooked up the ethernet yet. And three green lights over there. So this is a good sign. Also extremely fucking warm in this room. I cracked the window there to let some fresh air in. It kind of smells like farts and sleep. All right, let's uh, just get this here laptop up and running here. And uh, Okay, so the next step is to run an ethernet cable, which I have right here. So we're gonna run that into there, up into the router, and go from there. And now we got three green lights. Lovely. So I've gone ahead and disconnected the hard line going into the other room. And what I wanna see is, is if I come over here on my laptop and click on view network, I'm able to access my server. Well, fuck a duck, boys. It's working. It's working. Yup. Well, shit on a shingle. Okay. Well, oh, TV's not turned on. That would uh, definitely aid in getting the TV portion of this whole bedroom television system operation up and running. And yes, the TV does have the blue line up the middle still. That's a given. I'll close the lid. And we're good. Power line is installed. I didn't have to do any syncing or nothing. Just plug shit in. The hardest part was moving stuff around. But we did it. Um, we got a, quite the gap against the back area there. But we did it, so that's good. So let's give it the real test. See how she holds up in this room. I'm showing full connectivity. So let's pit her patter. Speedtest.net changed their shit. Now it's showing kilobytes or kilobits per second. What the fuck? Um, something's weird with speed test, but we're getting a lot higher download rate, but I would like to see it in megabits. I don't feel like doing mathematics. So before with the wire coming in, we were getting about 80 to 100 kilobytes a second, or megabytes a second, megabits a second for fuck's sakes. And we're on a gigabit network. With this setup, and it could be due to the old wiring on the house, I don't know. Uh, we're hitting close to 300 megabits a second. Not quite a gigabit. This is why I say gigabit internet, unless you want the upstream, not really worth it. So all in all, it seems to be pretty freaking good. Um, fuck, I really just wish he could just wait for his wife to come out instead of honking the fucking horn at her. But um, yeah, so is it good? Sure, sure, but here's the thing. This is what gets me. If I log into the router and click on start test, it'll do a speed test. And here's the results of the one that I did a while back. Um, 1.2 gigabits down and 1.25 or 1.22 megabits up. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so it's always going to consistently hit these speeds because it's going right from the modem right to the bell server and back. To get these speeds inside your house, you'd either A, have to be connected directly to the modem and you still wouldn't get 1.2 megabits or 1.2 gigabits because the fastest network card out there is only a gigabit. So you'd still have that 200 megabit buffer sitting there just doing nothing. So, and we just did it again and got 1.27 gigabits and 1.22 megabits up. Now for some reason, and I don't know what it is, I'm not able to get higher than it's a gigabit network it's got to be the condition of the wires in the walls my buddy has the same setup and he's consistently hitting 600 megabits a second on this one so it's got to be the wiring is kind of shoddy and it is what it is it's an old house but it works it's a solution if you need to get uh, a wired connection somewhere that's nowhere near your router power line AC might be the way to go for you like 300 megabits is still better than going through uh, Wi-Fi N or G and only getting like 60 and because it's a wired connection it's gonna have like I'm gonna test it thoroughly but theoretically it should be fucking just about as stable as plugging her directly into the router heaven forbid the power fails but if the power fails your internet goes with it too so not a big deal right but it works I just can't find a good speed test so I should have done this through the actual uh, hard line to show you but currently we're hitting some pretty fantastic speeds over here except for that upstream that upstream's kind of gimpy and it could be the switch i'm using too it's an older gigabit switch so maybe upgrading that later on down the road would solve it but 276 megabits a second is pretty fantastic compared to the 100 i was getting before off that hard line so it works pretty good um I did some more testing and so on and so forth and I'm getting about 270 down, 200 up. Nowhere near gigabit capabilities, 
but better than the 100 down 50 up I was getting off that old hard line. Well, 100 down 80 up. So, the only way to make it better would be to physically run an Ethernet cable from the red room into here, properly crimped, good to go. Alrighty people, well I put it in an order for some Chinese food for dinner because I don't feel like cooking tonight. So let's, without further ado, pitter patter. Oh, fuck, I need a dart. I want to vipe in my car while I drive my ride. So I'm going to grab the old trusty. Let's go get some Chinese food. Holy crap. It would have been a good day to come outside with the round mouth shovel and beat the crap out of some ice. Pretty sinks. She's a warm one out. Jesus Murphy, this thing could use a freaking bath. My God. Oh. Anyway, guys, I think for the rest of the day, I'm just gonna eat some food, do some laundry, get the bed at a decent hour tonight. Tomorrow's back to work, so we'll have to pitter patter then. But as for now, I'm shutting her down. So thanks for watching my video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. Any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, people, keep on vlogging.